Got it. Here, I'm ready to read it. When we All right, start. cool. All right, yep, go ahead. We want to put that in the recording so that there's evidence. <laughs> okay. So, all yours. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee with Bernie. So before we begin, I got a few important points we need to share. First, this meeting is being recorded to share our discussion on our YouTube channel, allowing those who couldn't join us today to benefit from our conversation. By participating in this meeting, you consent to being recorded and for the recording to be shared publicly. Please avoid sharing any personal or sensitive information that you wouldn't want to be publicly accessible. If you don't wish to be recorded or have your comments included in the video, let us know now or feel free to switch off your camera and participate, participate via chat only. Secondly, as professionals in the same industry, it's crucial to remember our obligations under antitrust laws. These laws exist to promote fair competition and prohibit practices that restrain trade. During our discussion today, please avoid topics that could infringe these laws, such as price fixing, market division, or any other anti-competitive behaviors. Your understanding and cooperation are greatly appreciated. Now let's move forward with our coffee chat. And uh, I have some special special guests that I wanted to invite in our coffee chat this morning um, because of our topic this morning. These are two colleagues that uh, um, really have done really well with team management, which is kind of going to be our topic this morning for our coffee chat. So I'd like everybody to welcome College of Fellow Larry Gillen from Colorado, and our AIBD president, Benjamin Table from Missouri. Thank you guys for getting on this morning. I really appreciate, appreciate it. So good to see your face too. <laughs> Happy to be yeah. here. Do you have yeah. any snow back there, Ben? Not yet. It's coming on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. We have a little bit this morning. <laughs> Okay, well, I know we don't have everybody on screen here, but um, this is just a kind of a tradition and I'm not gonna lose it. So um, Ben, Larry, Raven, Garrett, if you guys happen to have a cup with you, if you don't mind sharing it. Oh, I gotta grab mine. Hang on just one second. <laughs> Mine's catching, there we go. A little better shot right there. Oh, Walt Disney cup, that's the first. Yeah. Cool. And, it's, and it's before his mustache, if you notice. Oh yeah. <laughs> cool. Raven, I love your AIBD cup. Yeah. There we go. Wonderful coffee. Good stuff. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, as, as I mentioned, our um, topic is going to be on team management. And I also want to just remind everybody that this is a coffee chat, it is a roundtable discussion. So uh, it's okay to talk about anything, of course, business related. So if you really have something you want to get out there, just uh, feel comfortable and free to do that. But for the sake of you know, just having something to be able to uh, focus on a little bit or some, some type of an agenda, we're going to be talking about team management. And I want to tell a little bit of a story. Um, what I usually do on weekends is I, uh, I, I have an older brother. He doesn't drive. Uh, he works at Walmart. And um, on weekends when I'm able to, and even in, in uh, during the week, like today would be a day that I would normally go get him, but I, I usually drive him to work. I go pick him up in the morning and take him to work. Um, and when I do that, I stop by a coffee place called Dutch Brothers. I don't know if everybody has a Dutch Brothers in your, in your state, but um, it's a really small kiosk place where you just kind of drive up, order coffee, and, and, and move on. And I usually stop by there, pick up a couple of cups of coffee for me and my brother, and I take it to him and then drive him to work over at Walmart. Well, he, my brother likes the uh, coffee that's called a um, caramelizer. And it's very sweet. A lot of stuff is put into it, whipped cream and, and stuff like that. And when you pull up to the kiosk at Dutch Brothers, um, there's four young people in there working. And it's, it's a really small, cramped little, little building that they're in. And all four of them are immediately making this caramelizer for my brother. And they're, they have all this energy. They're, they're happy. They're, they're talking to me. They're asking me how my day is going to be and, and things like that. And I just admire the teamwork that the four have. And, and 
when I get there in the morning, sometimes it's really early in the morning and I'm the only one there and all four of them are participating and fixing that one cup of coffee for my brother. Uh, three of them are over there getting all their ingredients together and the fourth one is sitting by the window talking to me and asking me how my day is, what, what I got planned for the day and stuff like that. So I really admire how they work as a team together. And I think that that's probably something that Dutch Brothers um, does when, when it comes to hiring employees, that they really want their their people to be very engaged with their customers that come up and order coffee. So just wanted to share that with you guys. And, and I also want to do a, a kind of a fun little startup game, but I need, let's see, we got one, two, Michael, are we able to get your video, Mike? I'd like to get one. This we got one, two, three, four. Um, there he is. Hi, Mike. Can we get three more yeah, people on video? Yeah, say uh, anybody who wants to come on. And uh, we're, we're gonna. We're gonna said we need three more people. Yeah, three more people. It's it's a very uh, it's gonna be like a real fun game and really easy to do. It's it's a, it will be no problem at all. But I do I like to get a total of seven seven AIBD people or, or seven designers up here. All right. Uh, I'm going to grab Larry. Um, Larry, I just turned on uh, your ability. So I'm actually not, a, I think it's uh, up in your top right. There should be just below our cameras. There should be like a little camera button and a microphone button that's red. Uh, um... Who else wants on here? Oh. We got. I should be on. Yeah, we got. Uh, Larry. Sorry, uh, Larry Stevenson. I meant. Oh. Um, Audrey, I'm bringing you on. And Kevin. Um, and then. We're gonna bring Rusty on too. Since he's here, I think I'm not sure how many we can fit on here actually. Okay. There's Audrey. Hey, there's Audrey. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Kevin. Good morning. We got Rusty. Okay. That's good, Garrett. Thank you. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's exactly what I wanted. It's seven, seven people. Um, so we're going to play a little game here on um, word association. So what we're going to do, it's going to be about team management. So I'm going to, I'm going to start off with a word and then I'll pick one of your names and then you provide me one word related to that word that I, that I said, kind of a word association. We're just going to go around to all seven. Oh, I want to get my pen ready. Because I want to write these down so I can kind of, and uh, for those in the chat box, if you want to kind of play along with this, you can, when I, whenever you hear a word that's, given by me or anybody else, feel free to jot a word that you're thinking in the chat box. So the way this is going to work, and I'll start with, with Larry. Um, again, this is about team management. Okay, Larry. So I'm going to start, okay. off, I'm going to start off with one word and you tell me what word pops into your head that's associated with that word. Okay. My word, my word is collaboration. Mm, I would have to say, Teamwork. Teamwork. Okay, good. Okay, now I'm going to go to Ben. And Ben, please provide one word associated with the word teamwork. Inclusive. Oh, I'm going to have to get my Bible out to see if I, or um, excuse me, my dictionary out to see if I can understand what that says. Inclusive. Okay. So Michael Vitaglia, a word associated with inclusive. Uh, participation. Participation. Okay, cool. Sharing. Oh, hang on. I didn't ask you yet. No. <laughs> That's all right, Larry. Uh, I, I appreciate the enthusiasm. So, Larry, sharing. Okay. Then, uh, Audrey, the word associated with sharing. Uh, Steam. 
I'm sorry, what? Assisting. Assisting. Okay, great. And uh, Kevin, a word associated with assisting. Helping. Helping? Is that what you said, Kevin? Helping? Yes, helping. Okay. All right. Great. And um, uh, just go ahead and ask Rusty. Rusty, help us here with the word helping. Listen. <laughs> Listen, okay. All right. So great. So the words that I got here are collaboration, teamwork, inclusive, participation, sharing, assisting, helping, and listen. Wait, Wouldn't you didn't get Mike. Mike Batavia? Hmm. Yep. I said participation. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Good. So I'll, I'll repeat that. Collaboration, teamwork, inclusive, participation, sharing, assisting, helping, and listening. And really, all those words would be uh, associated with teamwork, right? Very good. So, so Ben, I'm going to be the dumb guy here. Inclusive. Tell me a little bit about inclusive. <laughs> well, especially in my line of work, we have so many people that can be involved. And sometimes when you think of collaboration, um, the question needs to be asked, are you inviting and engaging with all of the necessary people in order to make the most informed, confident decision. So to be inclusive, you need to make sure that you're going to research and investigate all the right stakeholders that should be involved, including them in the process, so you don't have a biased or misinformed decision. Oh, cool. All right. Okay, so that was fun. You guys, I just wanted to do something really cute there, and we'll just kind of kick off with our uh, conversation here about uh, team management. So let me uh, start off with our first question here. I'm going to bring up my uh, Word document so I can do a copy and paste so I can put that in the chat box there. Just a moment. Okay. Okay, I just entered it in the chat box. And the question is, and, and um, I'd like to ask uh, Larry and Ben these questions and anybody else that wants to uh, get involved and in, in what your thoughts are, that'd be great too. But I specifically wanted to ask Larry and Ben and bring them into today's meeting because Larry and Ben have had some real success with team management, and I thought that they would be very beneficial to our, to our coffee chat this morning. So the, the question is, what key qualities do you believe are essential for effective team management? So qualities. What would you, what, Ben and Larry, what would you say those qualities should be? Um, I, you know, I agree with uh, Ben as far as the stakeholders of bringing people in and being all inclusive in that. Um, I think that we have um, in our team and, and Ben knows our team, at least most of them. Um, we have anywhere from baby boomers all the way down to Gen Z's. We've got some Gen Z's in our office. And so um, I think the biggest thing there is the, the differences between all the age groups and everybody's backgrounds. And so to bring everybody in to be inclusive, I think is super important. Um, it's the only way you're going to get an entire group of people to work as a team and then have a common goal once you've established some of that. Yeah, I'll add to that. That's great, Larry. And I mean, I used to be on Larry's team, so <laughs> been there. And uh, I think one of the things that reflects that time and then what I've tried to um, exemplify as I lead more and more teams globally, um, trust. Trust is a must. It's a key to success. Um, and it goes two ways. You have to empower your teams in order for you to be able to trust them when you're delegating information to be able to accomplish it in an effective manner. They also need to trust you 
They need to understand that you are there for their best interest. You are there to help improve them and grow them. And without that trust, you might get tasks accomplished, but you won't do so in a loyal way and in a consistent way. It'll come from obligation, not from relationship. Hmm. Cool. And if, if I may ask both you, Larry and Ben, what's the size of your team? Um, I know Ben's is enormous, but <laughs> I, I, th I think if you if you look at all the people that are involved with our, our group, because we do have some outside sources as well. So there's about 10 of us. Yeah, and uh, currently I, my role shifted um, as of January 4. So I am at MyTech, we have four major services pillars. I was with our marketing organization for the last year and a half. I'm now with our services organization. I have nine direct reports to me around the globe, but we support as a team over 2,600 people. Golly. And do you, do you know all 2,000? <laughs> Not by name, <laughs> but um, I've interacted with them and mingled with them. And um, yeah, there's there's many facets. We have, that, was, that would be the direct team, but we're connected through sales, marketing, executive leadership, you name it. And then it's regionally. Um, so uh, it, it's very exciting and it's very interesting with the different dynamics of culture, um, of market and what, what's and necessary. What's necessary. Uh, it, you have to adapt because things change depending on who you're dealing with and what market you're dealing with and what the demand and the need is. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, Kevin, Audrey, Larry Stevenson, if you guys, and Michael Batagli, if you guys have something you want to share on that question. I see Kevin's got his hand up. <laughs> I see the hand. <laughs> oh, I raised that hand earlier when they wanted me to come online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, Audrey, Kevin, Larry Stevenson, Michael, do you guys work with any teams? Quick thought. I, I'm not, I mean, I'm a solo practitioner right now, but i um, been in part of teams and it just occurred to me, and this is maybe a little far off the subject, but if you are putting your trust um, in the, in what these people are bringing to you, it seems that you would need to have a clear direction for what's trying to be achieved and, and the, um, the end goal of the company or not even end goal, but just the framework so that it. it is not allowed to go beyond that into some wild hair, you know, that someone wants to pursue it has to be consistent with what's being trying to be achieved. That's excellent. Yeah, yeah. We, we call that at my tech, our identity framework. Who are we? And you need to make sure that that is communicated top down and bottom up. Um, for two reasons. One, it does create that type of unity and connectivity that we're all pursuing one goal or multiple goals that, that are aligned. And secondly, and it's very important, especially as teams grow, for new initiatives, new ideas, new ways of doing things, you have something to test against. Does this meet, does this fit with the direction we're heading and what we say we are about? If not, should we change or if we're really solid on our direction, is this something that even though someone may be passionate about, we have to be cautious about not I'm losing our identity. identity. Yeah. Yeah. Audrey, uh, are you a one person office like myself? Me, myself and I. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all the different hats, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I wanted to say um, with this question about uh, team management and such, it, it isn't just limited to having like a team of, of people inside your office. I, I work with a team. I work, I have my own, my own office, I'm a one person, a businessman, but I work with a team because I have a team of engineers. I have a team of mechanical, electrical, plumbing individuals that I work with. I work with the builder. I work, I consider the client part of the, my, my team. Um, so that all plays in that as well. That's a good point. Cause when I build, it's certainly a, a, good size team. Yeah. yeah. But with a lot less control over the communication structure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Michael Batagbe, you got your hand up. Yeah. Uh, there are so many different ways to have a team. Uh, being a sole proprietor like I am, we have, uh, or I have, uh, clients in the builder. So you got a homeowner, the builder, and me. So there's a team that needs to be put together. If, it's, if the project's going to be successful. 
And then working with groups such as uh, like Habitat, there's the Habitat board. There's in that group of people has to have a variety of people and that team has to be dynamic enough that it meets its goals. But the, uh, there's, you know, you, can, you really can't sum it up into single words. But the, I think one of the, the biggest one is, is uh, the biggest couple that I use or I try to keep up is respect and patience. Mm -hmm. Everybody is different and you have to be patient with that rest of the team because they may not be quite up to what you expect or you might not be up to what they expect. And then being respectful for what their talents are, what their abilities are, and respectful of their knowledge. Because nobody, I don't know everything, and if I was perfect, which I'm not, uh, uh, there's only one being that is perfect, and so I'm so far away from that. Uh, but even as a sole proprietor, we cannot, we cannot survive if we don't create a team of some sort. And that's how I, that's my thought on teamwork. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, um, going back to Larry and Ben, what happens when teamwork is not working? Um, Bernie, can you uh, recognize Larry? I think he had his hand up, but not oh. officially there. Yeah, sorry, Larry, I did not see you do that. Oh, that's, Larry. that's fine. Um, well, I didn't want to jump ahead of what you had for um, the other Larry, but uh, whenever you delegate something to someone, um, uh, let them take the ball and run. And don't, don't jump in because you would do it a little bit different than they would. See, see how it turns out, unless it's going south, real far, real south. You know, uh, yeah. yeah made that mistake many times many not too many times but i did make it and i uh, learned quickly no don't do that you know yeah. uh you you you've uh you've told this person uh, okay this is your deal uh take it and go and so you should let them run with the ball yeah that that's part of what uh, i heard ben say earlier about developing trust right yes mm -hmm. yeah okay I, I think kind of getting back to where um, you were at there, Bernie, one of the things, and, and you know, I, I know I've known Mike for a number of years, but we're in our 42nd year of business now, and we have 42 years worth of documents and manuals and checklists and everything else that we've had over the years. And so as Ben was, was talking a little bit or alluding to is, is you need to have a framework of what the end goal is. And so we're cleaning up, purging all of that documents, and we're bringing every one of the members of the team into that process yeah. and putting that into a, a common procedure manual that, you know, here's, here's how we treat a client. Here's how the plans are done. Here's some common statements that you know, once you've taken care of certain things in that project, here's some common commentary that you can respond to on emails because not everybody has the same skill set mm -hmm. and that's the that's the biggest thing that that you have to work around um and you know over the years we've been very blessed with a lot of very good intelligent and super people but over the years we've also had some people that are well you know we're not quite measuring up and so i had to I ran across an interesting book recently, and it's called, um, and, and some people may have seen it, it's called Surrounded by Idiots. And it's not to um, degrade anybody, but it is to look at the different behavior types and the different people. Um, because there would be things that I would delegate to certain team members and I kind of shake my head and go, what's happening? And they're not the same as other team members in the, in the process. And so we've hired a coach to kind of come in and evaluate, you know, what each one of the members are and then learn to adapt to what's going to work to each one of those team people when you're relating to them. And then 
coming together, you know, kind of as Audrey was talking about, we've got a common goal or a common um, um, set of standards that you need to meet. And that's what creates the accountability side of it. You know, did you have this done by a certain date? Did you communicate this to the client? Are the plans meeting these standards? And, um, you know, I'm going to test it a little bit more, um, mainly because as you guys who are the sole proprietors, and I've been there also, I'm sure you guys are working about 60 hours a week and maybe more. And, you know, one of the things that I want to do after this many years in business is I want to step down to less and less hours. And so that means that the team really does have to be able to take over and have to trust. And so doing some of those efforts are, um, we'll see how that starts to test out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll echo a little bit of what Larry said. Um, it's especially important, and I'm going to use an example that I think impacts both people with internal teams. But uh, Bernie, I like how you put even with sole proprietors, you have a team. Your customer's part of your team. Your building um, review board, <laughs> they could all, you know, maybe maybe there's certain team members you wish weren't involved in certain parts of the design, but they're there. Um, I think uh, one of the most valuable things that people can do, um, even starting with yourself, is taking some sort of personality assessment, mm -hmm. reviewing um, what are your strengths, what are your challenges, how do you respond to things? There are a number of them out there. Uh, our team has uh, done a number of them. I'm actually working on one currently called People First Leadership. Um, and it, this really helps not only you understand yourself and develop yourself as a professional, but when you're interacting with other people, once you start to understand different traits, different reactions, you can start to pinpoint, oh, I bet that person falls into this category. And it's not to is to say, okay, if that person is in this category, here's the best way to approach them, and here's probably what I should avoid in order to uh, eliminate potential for conflict. Now, as you get into personal teams and connections, one of the things that I like to do, the first thing I did when I transitioned this new team, the nine people that are reporting to me had not reported to me prior to this point. Um, I ask them, you know, tell me your day to day, what you're doing, what you're not doing. And then I asked them to get personal. I said, I want to know the top three things that you find meaning and purpose in what you do. And then I want to know the top three things that you're frustrated or feel like you're held back on. And that really helps determine because if we even take the idea of this group, some of you might say the most important number one thing that I love to do in residential design is meet the needs and have a happy customer. That could be because of your personality and your business ethics. The number one thing that you do is part of your design. Now, no less important, the other person would be like, man, I really get charged up when I have everything completed and it's organized and it's delivered effectively so I don't have issues in the field. That's no less important from an execution standpoint, but it speaks volumes about what is important to the individual. Yeah. And as you grow that, I've had individuals that were phenomenal at execution. Well, they're growing, they're building, we should promote them. Well, you promote them into a people leadership role and they'll come back to you within months saying, I hate this. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, because they're not finding meaning or purpose in mm. empowering other people and coaching, they want to be the one carrying the baton and actually accomplishing tasks. So it's very mm. important to understand what makes people tick in order to meet their needs and potentially, if you want them to grow, ask them questions and challenge them on their growth because you don't always stay where you should stay. And uh, Larry's a classic example of that. Prior to being with Larry, I was always thinking I would be in a support role. And Larry was one of the first individuals who didn't just grab me out of his team. I guess when he says he's working, when he works with difficult people, he's probably referring to me because he said, maybe you should try your own business here. But no, he, he encouraged me and pushed me into something that I would have probably not considered. And that set a track for everything that I'm doing now. So recognizing thing in your people and empowering them and coaching them and guiding them is an amazing ability to do instead of just sit down, shut up and do your work. 
and you develop people that are much more loyal, much more passionate, and can go on to do things that you might never think that they could do before. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. And I, I like that. And part of what you were saying there just reminded me, uh, Larry, I don't know if you remember this little tasking that we did in the office, but I remember it to this day. At least, at least I remember the results. I don't I don't remember what it was called, but that's the one where we kind of analyzed what our what our talents were. Yours was uh, you were uh, a visionary, and you abs you absolutely are. Every time I talk to you, these visions of of great ideas and things like that. And when I did my assessment, I came out. It was some I don't remember the exact word of it was, but it was my gift was to produce to to provide the the, the quality work and such. And I remember when it, when that result happened, I was thinking, oh man. I want to be a visionary. I don't want to be the guy that's producing the, the work or whatever, but I've learned to accept that, that, that that's, where I'm, that's where I'm good at. That's what my assessment came out at. And that's, that's the thing that I do. And, and um, it, it, it just, it's always proved that over, over, the, over the years since we did that um, test. Do you remember that? I do, but you know, Bernie, you, you're, you're putting yourself down a little bit there. <laughs> you are a visionary. I mean, this, 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 coffee with Bernie. This is amazing. I think this is this is phenomenal. And you have come across and leadership with AIBD. I mean, a little background, Bernie actually was part of our team. What is it? Probably 30 years ago now or more. And, you know, just helping and seeing the possibilities in, in people. And I think that's the hard thing to look at is how to see that the people have that possibility like Ben and kicking him out and letting him do his own thing. But you know, um, it, it's really kind of one of those things that you can see those possibilities in people. And you just sometimes you just want to take them and say, can't you see that you really do have that, that possibility and you can go farther and then how you can encourage those people. So, um, you know, I, I, I've been kind of pinging around talking to a number of other AIBD people, um, all in about my age. You know, we're in our, our 60s and are, are we going to retire? Are we going to work forever? And I'm getting some answers from lots of people all over the place. But I see possibilities in my team and a lot of other people. So it's how to encourage them to go out and to go beyond where they currently are. Because most people kind of limit themselves to um, a box and they just stay within that box. And the more encouragement, the more things that you can slowly work on, that they'll get out of that box and they will go out and they will they will shine. I mean, you are an absolute perfect example of that, Bernie. Yeah, thank you. And and so I think these are the these are the kind of things that you know you have to kind of get out of other people's way. For some people, and Ben is Ben could sell ice to Eskimos, I think. <laughs> um, but you know, there are people, and you have to look at their personalities. And so, we knew that Ben would take off and, and go a lot of different directions. There are people in our office that are very quiet and they're reserved, but you can see they've got so much talent. And that's what's been fun, kind of putting together the new um, procedure manual is. They're stepping up and saying, well, well, I'll create these checklists. I'll create this. Well, what about this? Well, what about that? And it's and it's that mentoring that that you need to be able to get out there and bring back to the team and allow them to participate. You know, and then like the other Larry said is you also have to let them go. And there are times that you have to kind of have a little bit of a curtail on that because you can let them go and they will go south and you kind of go, oh, well, I got to clean that up. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of keep an eye on what's going on along the way. Yeah. yeah, I think the one thing, Bernie, that I would add to that, because I think sometimes people associate, well, my personality is this, therefore I can't do this or I'm not equipped for this. Um, we did one of these personality assessments last mm -hmm. year with a leadership team. And we had no less than 40 people in the room that are all leaders, all higher up within the company. And then at one point we had to physically get up and they had uh, different uh, pieces of paper pasted around with what your personality was. And effectively everyone moved around and there were multiple people in multiple locations. 
These are all leaders. Mm -hmm. These are all people that lead people. These are all people that are extremely successful. And I would say some of them, uh, all of them take on somewhat of the visionary standpoint. So it shows you that even though your personality may be directed to be more prominent in one area, it does not limit you to success or leadership as you move forward. And the comedic thing that they joked about is, first thing I noticed is when I went to mine, which was passionate, extrovert, all sorts of that kind of stuff, my boss that I reported to was the exact opposite of the spectrum across the room. And the first thing you think is, oh no, how can we work together? But then my next one-on-one, -on -one, my boss is like, that's why I want people like you on my team, because I need to be complimented by people with skills that I don't have so we can be more well-rounded and I can see things or be receiving input in a different direction that I would normally understand. Yeah. Cool. Um, I gotta take a little pause here. Um, Garrett and Raven, can we? Uh, are we gonna go ahead and do the coffee mug? Um, get what it's called, but I'll let you guys do it. The raffle, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Are you ready, Garrett? Yeah. Let me. Yeah. How well, we do this? Yeah. While they're while they're getting it ready, I like to add something for everybody that's listening. That's in the chat box as well. Ben, ben brought up something, and, and i like to see if anyone's interested in doing this in the chat box, but list, as a residential designer, list three things that you really like about residential design, and then list three things that frustrate you about residential design. I'm real curious to see what shows up in the chat box. Okay, Raven and Garrett, go ahead. All righty. Um, can you okay. see that all right, or is it real tiny yes. to you? I see it. It's not. It's fortune. not real tiny. No, it, it, for us, it my, my video screen went down, and this is main main yeah. center stage right now. Awesome, cool. Okay, so um, um, go ahead, take it away, Raven. We're giving away these exclusive AIBD mugs. Um, Mine. The only way to get one is to be part of our community and renew your membership on time. So uh, for the people who renewed their membership in this past month, uh, there will be three lucky winners and we're going to spin the wheel and see who's first. Also wanted to know, uh, one of them renewed for his 31st time in a row. Raven, do you have, do you remember who that was? Uh, yep. Here, let's see. That would be uh, Rick Fonseca has renewed for the 31st time. Wow, that's awesome. That's wow. amazing. All righty. So first winner. <clears throat> is Felicia Foster. Nice. Oh, Felicia. Is she here? I don't think so. All right, next winner. Hey, Dennis Fletcher. Congratulations. And one more winner. Matthew Parker. Oh, cool. All right. Congratulations, those three. <clears throat> what is the total size of our organization? Uh, it's over a thousand. Over a thousand, you think? Yeah. Um, I don't remember the exact number. And, you know, it fluctuates a little bit every month, but not much. So. But it's, well, I mean, it's, what's that, Raven? I was going to say uh, congrats to all the winners. And those who did win, I'll be reaching out to you guys individually, just so you know. All right. Thanks, Raven. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Raven and Garrett. Okay, we're going to move on here. There's two more questions I'd like to get out here, um, starting with uh, Larry Gillen and Ben. The question I've put out there is, Share an experience of where excellent team management led to a successful project or outcome and what made it work.
Ben, you want to start? <laughs> sure, I'll start with this one. Um, we had a large project that we were working on launching globally and kind of similar to what I was saying earlier with involving the right stakeholders. Um, we had seen times in the past where teams had pitched or presented and the first thing executive leadership would say, well, that's great. Did you include this person? Did you include that person? Well, no. Okay, well, we're hesitant to move forward with this because we want to make sure that this is a collective vision. Um, and vice versa, when we presented, it was not, hey, this is Ben and I'm presenting this idea. No, this is the collective vision. We actually had a page on our presentation that had the actual sign off of all the individuals globally that were part of it and were committed. And we presented it as a MyTech Global Vision Initiative. So something where you can at least have people sign off and have agree on uh, agreement on was was definitely critical. And one of the things we noted is it's very impossible <laughs> when you the larger the group to have complete collective and that's not a bad thing. And I think it's important for people to note that some people can potentially disagree or not be completely on the same page with an initiative or a, a project or a plan moving forward. But the important thing is, can you still receive alignment? Can you still get people to commit and to move through it, even if they're not in the complete agreement on the path that it's taken? And one of the things that we pitched out there that um, I think was important that I wanted to share with this team is when we're approaching a design solution, who is the most important stakeholder on that? Some would say, well, it's the architect, it's the designer because they're the ones that are bringing in division. Structural engineers might argue, well, no, it's us because without our input, is it gonna actually stand up? Or the code regulatory agency might say, well, I need to approve this. Or the homeowner will say, well, I'm gonna have to live here, so I'm the most important. One of the things that we kind of pitched was the most important stakeholder is the project, yeah. not an actual person, it's the project. And sometimes, can I as an individual stakeholder sacrifice what I feel like I demand for my needs for the better good of the project? And how do we do that connect collectively? So that was an example of where we kind of pitched that in and everyone checked their egos at the door and said, this is the best solution all around and we're going to collectively align. Yeah, cool. Uh, Larry Gillen, curious on what experience or what led to a successful project for you? Um, we've got a, a project in it, and right now it, it does showcase on our website. I had um, Jason move it around yesterday. So it's a modern home. And, you know, Colorado Springs has a variety of, of styles and things, but we're seeing much more modern come into our, our fold in here. And we had some clients that wanted to do a, a mountain modern house, something you would see up in Vail or Aspen or something like that. And it's pushing the envelope of what's going on in, in our community. So as an office, we team together all of the people within the office to design a project that had a tough time with city officials, because I'm seeing some of the, the, the comments in the chat box right now about city officials. So we're on a we're on a site that's too far from the street, so we have to bring a fire truck up our driveway, up a steep driveway, be able to park it, be able to, to take care of it, um, to preserve, because our city has some issues with preserving all the trees and keeping the vegetation there, and then also create something that, that meets a certain aesthetic. Um, and so within our team, one of our junior drafters was really wanting to get into doing a, a larger projects. And so we assigned her to be the, the, the person doing the principal drafting. And um, she's she's getting pretty good at Revit, but she was still struggling a bit. So within the office, um, she's laying the project out and other members of our team are helping her out. Hey, we need to do this. Hey, we need to do that. So they are chipping in and being part of the, the teaching leadership. From that, the clients are, gosh, I can't visualize the house. Okay, so 
um, the software and some add-ons to that software will allow you to really visualize that house. And so other members of the team said, okay, well, let's teach you how to create some videos, create some 3D things. And then we had other members of the team chip in and say, well, gosh, you know, let's enhance this video because it would be really good for marketing material. And then we teamed up with the interior designer and we shared our, our Revit files and showed them how they could bring in their furniture and all of the new things that they were putting in there. And then other members were training each other back and forth and working with the city so that we could actually bring that project in without having to add a, a fire hydrant and convince them that we can actually bring the fire truck up and we only need to bring it up halfway up the hill. And so it ended up with everybody collaborating to turn this into a very successful project and something that hadn't been done in our community. And then along the way, we worked with our contractors and many of the subcontractors to say, hey, you know, this is a, it's a different kind of architecture here. You have to do, we've got exposed steel beams going in there and we've got, you know, these, these thin windows that you see that in these fancy Arizona houses and how do you get that to meet the energy codes? And, you know, it was really quite a collaborative effort. So, you know, that's one of those things in, in getting everybody from the contractor, the owners, everybody on our team to be able to effectively deliver, as Ben said, the project at the end of the day. And so it's, um, it's something that um, nobody's really seen a lot of that around our community. And uh, it's one of the things that's been good because we get the, we get the phone calls now. We yeah. have a, you know, we have, a, we have a house of a, a client that contacted us from Texas coming in and we call it the glass house because there's more glass, I think, than walls, but how we're making that actually work. And it's helping us to teach other people <clears throat> how you can actually make those kinds of projects happen. Oh, I love that story, Larry, because it's a uh, instead of one person fight, fighting all the entities to make a project come out great, it's a teamwork and everybody uh, uh, participating. Like you said, that that that's really cool. Yeah. There's a when you were talking and, I, and you were describing how it, um, you had problems to deal with, and everybody contributed something to help the problem. And it just I, I mentioned this to you a week or so ago, Larry, but it's it just reminds me of something you said to me a long time ago that I always remember, and that is every problem has a solution. And I truly believe that. Every problem has a solution. Yeah. Very good. I'm a big believer in standardization. Um, and I think that uh, uh, f from the days of pencil drawing um, to um, AutoCAD and Revit, et cetera, we have let us uh, some... Yeah. We have let some of that standardization uh, fall behind. <laughs> yes, uh, I've got those same tools right in front of me. I want to sell them on antiques, okay? But, um, um, okay, uh, standardization and, and drafting, it was what? It was always from the uh, upper left to the lower right, so you wouldn't smudge the paper. Okay, so I, uh, uh, um, I, I try to work... The, Whenever I have standards, then I try to stick with the standards. But then I always, I'm always searching for a better way. Is there a, is there a better way? Until I find a better way, then I'm going to stick with what I know. And yeah. in my, in my, in my teaching, um, of um, different people, I, uh, I show them and tell them and discuss the standards that we have, and. Uh, but I'm always open to um, anything that they might want to bring in, but they're not going to be adopted until they're until they're proven. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think uh, standardization of, of items is uh, important to success. Yeah, good point, Larry. Thank you. So I'm wondering, Michael, Kevin, Audrey, is there something on that question that you would want to share also or have thoughts on? Uh, well, I have just a different comment. Uh, ben actually 
made the phrase, or said the phrase, which I think is something to really consider, being a, a pretty important part of this teamwork thing, is that the checking egos at the door. Uh, and I will use the AIBD conferences as the best example. Sole proprietor, me. Talk to Ben Table. 2,000 people on, on the payroll. Oh, God, 20,000. Don't give me a heart yeah. attack, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, do, I don't do the, the scale of homes that uh, Dan Sater does or uh, Wayne Visby do or Larry does in some cases. I just, but I do my own deal. But by the, the group is checking their egos at the door. You couldn't tell it from talking to one person or the other. Now, when you have and you put together a team, then all egos do have to go out the window and they have to stay at the door. Otherwise, you fight the ego issue from day one. And that's that usually ends up in a, a total disaster. So I, I really like that term. I'm, I'm glad you brought that one up. Check the egos at the door. Yeah, cool. Another one that's associated with that, Michael, just to throw it out there, is asking yourself and asking the team, do I have any preconceived biases? No. no am, I, am I coming yeah, into I, this with something? <laughs> I kind of I kind of had an example of that one a couple months ago. Uh, we had a meet, team meeting with the builder and his framer about a new home. Of course, this one is, he, he didn't really like it. They, with the, the framer says, don't build the dormer windows on that house. Don't put them on there. They're too expensive. They're hard to build. Now, I was trying to lighten it up a little bit. So I said, well, David, I think his name was David. I said, David, I'll tell you what, here's the problem. I said, you have to get your left-handed hammer out. He said, excuse me. I said, I design left-handed. So if you get your left-handed hammer out, it'll be a lot easier to follow the instructions to do it successfully. Uh, he turned about the four shades of Larry's sweater. And finally, after he settled down, he we had the open discussion. But basically, everybody's different and... You have to be respectful of those issues. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Michael. I've, I've posted the third question up here, and uh, for sake of time, we're going to have to make the, the answer a little bit quicker. But um, the question is, can you share a situation when team dynamics were challenging to manage, and how did you address it? So really what I kind of like to hear, what I think everybody else would kind of like to hear too, is is uh, what happened where something went wrong, but... but um, how did you address it? What did you learn from it? I guess is what I want to get out of that. What did you learn from it, so that the rest of us can kind of glean from that and, and learn learn as well from your experience. Uh, answer. First okay. of all, I think that my story added into your question. Yeah. <laughs> the second part of that is is the builder decided not to build the dormers on the roof. Okay. The result was is the house sat for nine months because all you saw was roof, in my opinion. And they finally realized, well, we should have built the dormers on the roof. Okay, good. Thanks, thanks, Michael. And then, and then addressing that same thing over to uh, Ben and Larry Gillen. Larry, um, start this one. What can you repeat that question? <laughs> I was typing some notes. Yeah, no, no problem, Larry. The question is, can you share a situation when team dynamics were challenging to manage, and how did you address it? What I'm really looking for is is uh, something that you had that was challenging and that you kind of learned from it. Um, if you can share that, we're we're running out of time, so I kind of want to make the answer a little bit shorter. But something that you learned that we can also learn from what you learned. I I, I think the 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 biggest thing has been um, we have had a lot of really good people through the years. And over the years, we've also had people that have come into the fold that have, have different personalities and different backgrounds and different changes. And so that's kind of what prompted me to find 
And I ran across that book, you know, working with idiots. And it's really not working with idiots, but it is finding the different personalities mm -hmm. and learning how to work with those. And so, you know, that's a big part of even what we're going through now is um, we have a phenomenal team. They do exceptional work, but there are challenges between some egos and there's some challenges between people with different backgrounds and, and different personalities and different traits. And so bringing together, I think the, you know, putting together this new um, procedure manual is super helpful because it's bringing everybody's common goals into fold and everybody's participating. And I think that's a big thing that is helping um, bring some of the little things that have cropped up over the last two years um, into fold and is, and is helping us out. So we'll see how it goes. And, you know, Ben working with as many people as he has and is, and so forth, there are challenges some because there are people that just, they're not going to quite get it that first time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you have to give them a second time and a third time. And I think Ben had a statement about that at one time when he used to tell the people, what was it, Ben? I'll show you once, second right. time I'll yeah. do something. And then the third time it's like, okay. Yeah. So I'll let yeah. Ben carry that conversation on. Yeah, two comments. Thank you, Larry. One, and I actually learned this from my first boss when I was in cor uh, corporate doing um, commercial jobs. My boss came to me and he said, I will never be angry at you when I have to correct you the first time. I assume that you didn't know. I assume that you didn't know. I'm going to correct you. I'll point you in the right direction. Now, when we have the same conversation, conversation three or four times now I'm going to be ticked off so that was the one thing but um I yes I've, I've worked with you know thousands of people I've worked directly with hundreds of people um in my direct reporting I've had opportunities to help grow people and I've also had to let people go and the best advice that I was ever given by one of my supervisors when I dealt with one of my first difficult people was then give them every opportunity to succeed and force them to prove you wrong. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Cycle of continuous improvement. Yes, <laughs> because some of this is concerning. OK, yeah, they're not doing what I want them to do. And you can put all the blame on them. But the question is, have you empowered and equipped them with every opportunity to succeed? Or is this perhaps not necessarily just a failure on them? Is this a potential failure on yourself where you can encourage and coach and guide? And then if you have to take disciplinary action after that, you have at least the peace to know you've done everything you can to lead them in the right direction, to share the identity framework, share the mission, share the vision. The way I like to describe it is here's the path, here's the journey we're taking, and I'm welcoming you to come with me. I'm going to give you all the equipment you need. I'll give you the maps. I'll even forge the trail for you to follow. But it's up to you to follow and encouraging that to happen. So, um, yes, in a situation where the team dynamics were challenging, I can tell you success stories where through empowerment, through that person realizing their purpose and their position, giving them that inspiration, they've jumped in with both feet and we've gone forward. I've also had situations, but I'd, I'd, I'd like to think that the situations where I've had to either discipline or dismiss someone, it's been very clear that they were almost asking for the dismissal too, because when you are that transparent, they realize I'm not fitting in here and where they're going, I don't have desire to follow. So it's not so much catching them off guard or by surprise, it's just confirming to them. And again, it's not a negative thing even in that light. It's, you know, you're a very talented individual. I want you to do where, what you find meaning in and find purpose in and have passion in. And sometimes having someone shift into something else because of that helps them discover what they were really passionate about. But nobody wants to try to force someone, you know, you, you wouldn't tell a bird how well that, that fish swims and vice versa, how well you know, that bird flies if they're, if they're two different things that can do two different things well. Yeah. Cool. Very good. Um, and I want to share one word. I heard the word once in our conversation here for the past hour. I think it was implied a number of times, but I heard it once and it would be a good word to add to our list of words that we had when we started off here, but that Michael Battaglia mentioned it and it's the word patience. 
to really have that um, with, with good team management. Okay, um, we're gonna go ahead and end our coffee chat for today. We're at the top of the hour already. Thank you, Ben and Larry Galen for joining us. Uh, Michael Battaglia, Kevin, Audrey, Larry Stevenson, thank you all for your input too. And everybody's input in the chat box. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm gonna stay on just for a little bit so I can go back and read them because I, I'm engaged with the conversation, so I don't always get to read the chats and everything. Uh, next month, we're going to continue on with our um, leadership skills. The topic is going to be continuing education and skill development. That's going to be kind of fun to put together. So I hope you can join us all next month for our next coffee chat. Uh, thank you all again. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you, Bernie. everyone. Thank you, Bernie. Good to see everybody. See you next month. See you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, ben, um, may I have your email address? Yeah, Larry, I think we've talked before, but I'll shoot you another email. Um, with uh, I've got your email, and I'll send you an email. Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate yep, it. Thank you. Yep, bye-bye. Okay. Everybody have a good uh, weekday, month. Okay, bye-bye. You too, you too, Larry. I'm just scrolling back and looking at all the chats here. There's a lot. A lot of it was uh, getting logged in and everything. <laughs> are you snowed in today? We are. We got we got a very nice snow day going on. Woke up. It's still going. I'm looking out the window right now. 